that's really dusty. Might have overdone it a bit there. Let's have a look. Let's open a window. <gasps> What is up everyone? We are in the fish room. What an absolute winner, the first time I've been back here. For anyone watching the video, Creek Eagle Floorboard is still here. Now, obviously I've been very busy, so nothing has been done in the fish room. I've been down at MD Studio, we have been across to Holland, we go to uh, Florida in a week's time. So it has been hectic. All that alongside, you know, obviously helping the guys out at the shop every now and again, and oh, it's just been madness. But I finally got time to get up into the fish room and get something done. And we've had a really cool Tetra in the shop for ages, and I really want to escape a tank for one. I want to keep it really simple, really easy to do, but with this rare Tetra element thing. Now they're not a big Tetra, they are quite a small Tetra, six, seven centimeters fully grown, so we are gonna be putting them, hang on, in this. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. So this is the Scaper 60 Aquarium. Um, simple hang on the back filter, uh, nice plant light over the top of it. The room's staying at about 22 degrees at the moment, so should be good without a heater, but I will keep an eye on it just to check that no fluctuations are happening, but I am heating the room, so should be okay. They don't need a great deal of room or swimming space. They're not a um, sort of a fast flowing river fish. So I think this size tank's gonna be perfect for the little group of like, I think 10 or 12. I'm not too sure how many to get at the moment, but yeah, I know that there's a group of probably 20 or 30 out there. So yeah, I think a little, nice little group of 10 or 12. I don't know if they've been bred yet, actually. They're a species I've never kept before, and this is actually the first time of them being in the shop, so I have to do a bit of research on that, to be honest. Um, yeah, not read up on that. So it'd be quite cool if it does, it does, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I just really want to keep them, because I think they're a cool species. Now the thought I'm going for, I'm thinking, obviously, rocks, wood, all that sort of stuff, but no, I'm thinking a bit more like tree roots. So what I've got is this cool twiggy wood. I can't remember the name of it. You were all gonna ask me, aren't you? You're all gonna ask me in the comments. It came in as Totoro wood. What, as in like the dude from Studio Ghibli? Okay, Totoro wood. If anyone's looking, it's probably got other names in other places, but I'm thinking tree, a few little plants, few rocks, nothing too exciting as in like scape wise, but I want it really natural. So I'm thinking a few botanicals as well. I've got some lotus pods and I've got um, I've got some older cones and stuff, but first we need to get a substrate layer in here. Again, not going to go mega planty, so I think a little bit of substrate in the back and then just a sand sort of capping over the top of it. Keep it very thin, um, not too much nutrients because we don't want too much nutrients. We're not putting too many plants in there, so yeah, a little bit of substrate. Let's have a look. Now, like I was saying, substrate wise, we're going to keep it fairly simple, so I've just got a bag of substrate now i don't want too much but i'm thinking across that back edge and maybe a little bit in the front but i don't want too much normally i would put this in a bag but i don't think there's enough space really for what i've got planned and to what i want to do so is that going to stay there hopefully that'll stay there nope that won't stay there i could just be naughty and slide the tank over this will make it easier so yeah, I think we're going substrate in the back. Now to cap that off, we're just going for a really fine sand. So now we've got our substrate layer in, we will be going for some scatter gravel. I've got some nice little sort of grey pebbles that we'll put on at the end just to sort of finish it off. But now we can go for our hardscape. Now, I've got some plans for some sort of really structural sort of Siriu stone, um, but it's not Siriu, it's like mountain stone, I think they call it. It's all the same, isn't it? Grey rocks with lots of ripples and niceness in it. And then, like I said, I've got these really cool bits of wood. Now, I might need to break these up a little bit because I sort of want the individual branches to sort of wrap around a little bit. I want it to look like a flooded, flooded tree. That's my, that's my plan in my head. Uh, now I'm just thinking I want this tree-ish thing to be the focal point. So 
I'm thinking that I should get this stuff in first. Now I think I'm gonna have to prop, this is my middle one that I'm wanting. I'm gonna need a severe amount of glue as well. That's my middle one. I can't remember which way around this was now. That's the black one. I've been looking at them all day thinking, how do they go in? So he's, I might have to get rid of those bits on top. So he's coming up in there, he's coming down there. And then this one I think is the one I'm gonna have to cut in half. Well, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I'll uh, time lapse this bit and you can come and see it in a minute when I'm finished. There we go. So nice little hardscape done. Really don't overthink hardscape. If that's, that's the one thing that I'd probably say to everyone, do not overthink hardscape. It's so easy to sort of get muddled up and like, oh, that rock needs to go there and that rock needs to go there. Whereas if you just get it in vaguely how you want it, start working with it, you can get there. It's, it's simple, simple, I promise. <laughs> now I'm gonna get some glue in here because this wood is definitely going to float. Um, so I'm just going to get some cyanoacrylate glue. There's a few sort of touching points you can see where well, you probably can't. Should I take you off the tripod and show you? Let me show you. Yeah, so you can see there's a few touching points. This bit here, this bit down in here, this bit over here. This one doesn't touch much to be honest, which is annoying, but I'm hoping to be able to glue him to his friends and then yeah, he shouldn't move anywhere. But yeah, I like that and I'm obviously going to be viewing it from sort of this side as well a little bit. Um, sorry for the glass being misty, I'm going to get that cleaned a second. But yeah, I'm really digging that, really cool little hardscape, quick, simple, job done. Now, well, let's go and have a look what plants I can salvage from other tanks. I literally just said I was needing to glue, didn't I? So I've got my cyanoacrylate glue, we're going to go through, glue all the points. Then I'll go and look for some plants. I've got some new ones that I've had sitting in tanks, but yeah, I'm going to salvage a lot of stuff out of other tanks for this. Just because I don't want to buy any new ones, so... Uh, yeah, let's go on and glue this quickly. There we go. Loving that. So I've added a few extra little twigs in. I dropped some, so I needed to use my new tweezers. Actually, shout out to NT Labs for these new cool tweezers. Look at these blue. Loving the blue. And I've got, yeah, got my scissors and stuff in there. The pouch doesn't come with it. That's my old pouch, but yeah, perfect little uh, set of tools for me to get this scape going. But yeah, look at that. Oh, it looks much better, actually. I said I was going to clean the glass, didn't I? Hang on, let me give you two seconds. There we go, so that's a bit better. The glass is a bit clearer now. But yeah, so we've added a few extra twigs in just to sort of give it that rooty sort of vibe growing over the rocks. A few more rocks and bits and pieces, but yeah, I'm actually really liking that for these little tetras. I think that's gonna be a cool little skate. Right, I've just realized what the time is and it's getting dark outside, so I need to crack on with this. So I've picked up, uh, this is a new species. I think it's called Hyptis, Hypstis. It's a really cool new plant. I've just taken some cuttings off of one that I've got growing downstairs. Some of the leaves down the bottom are a little bit ropey, but they'll be okay. I've also got some area cowlon. I think it was area cowlon. Might not have been area cowlon. No, I'm pretty sure it was. Area cowlon. I've got a few boosters in the bottom that I've taken out of another tank. And I've also got some nice little boosters that I've got from another tank as well that you can't really see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to sort of spread them out in get this filled up and then I'm going to go have dinner. But honestly, it's late and I didn't realise what the time was. So, um, commence the planting quickly and the filling uh, and then I'll see you when it's cleared. This bit sounds a bit weird it's because my microphone has died so hopefully you can hear me 
But all I've got to do now, chuck some tap water safe in there. That will make the water safe for the fish. And then I've got some filter starter as well. Um, I can't remember how much. I can never remember how much I need to use of this stuff. 10 mil per 50 liters. So yeah, this tank is just gonna be over 10 mil. Get that treated and then it's leaving it for a few days. And I will see you when we come back. So we'll do 10 mil of that into the back. And 10 mil of this one. I'm on the wrong side now. Turn me of that one. That's the filter starter, so that's all the good bacteria. And we are done. So, hopefully you can hear this. Hopefully it doesn't sound awful. I will see you in about a week when this is cleared and it looks really pretty. Then we can add the fish. What is up everyone? We are back. So it's been four or five days, I think. Um, we've used some mature media in the filter from one of the other tanks. Um, we've also done a few water changes on it to, um, or with water from other tanks. So in theory, it should be all mature. Everything's testing up okay. So we've tested it all. The good thing is obviously I used a lot of stuff, a lot of the plants as well out of other tanks. So with the media, this tank should be kicking on all cylinders straight away. Now I have just got back from the studio and on the way back, I picked up the fish. So I dropped in to see the girls and guys at uh, Maiden Ed Taunton. Oh, I don't know why my scissors were, my scissors, my tweezers were in the bucket. Um, popped back in to see them and yeah, they, all these, oh, just the fish look so cool. I'm so chuffed with them. So we're gonna get them acclimatized. Once I've got them acclimatized, I'll probably give them maybe this evening, but probably next couple of days, let them settle in and I'll do some shots for you so you can see what's going on with them. I don't think I've actually told you what they are yet. They'll probably be in the thumbnail anyway. But these guys are a rare tetra that I've never kept in the 16, 17 years I've worked in the hobby. Now, the other thing I did get, and like the shop's only about 10 minutes down the road from me, so our water is spot on the same. I did get some pygmy quarries. That water's really high. That's not going to bode well for putting that in there, is it? <gasps> We're okay. Um, I'm going to remove some water out of this tank quickly, then I'm going to show you the Tetris. I just remembered I put a few extra plants in, so um, let me take you off the tripod and I'll show you what plants we put in. Also, excuse how yellow this light is, I need to buy a new bowl, but we'll get around to that at some point. Yeah, so as I was saying, we've got some little pygmy Corridorus living up in here, they're chilling out in there, so they're looking cool. Um, so the difference is we changed around, we put this big clump of Anubia, so we've got Nana, Nana and Nana Bonsai. So we put that in there just to fill in that gap. There was a bit of a sort of a root that came over. Didn't really like it. So I just filled it full of plants. Now the plants in behind are all stood up so you can see the Hyptis, Hyptis. I'll put the name on the screen at some point or in the comments so that you can see what it is. But yeah, that's all stood up straight. So eventually that should be like all the way to the top and filling in that back section. All the boosters have settled in lovely. The area Cowlon settled in lovely. And then what I found was I found some little Glossostigma little sprigs of it um, in another tank. And I thought, you know what, I'll take some cuttings and I'll chuck it in there. So there's a few sort of patches of that. I don't think it'll do massively, like it shouldn't go mad in here, but it'll do all right. And it just adds a little bit of a different touch. The other thing actually I want to go and do, I want to go and get some floating plants from downstairs. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you the tetras and then I'll go and get some floating plants while they're acclimatizing. So right back on the tripod and then I'll show you the tetras. Right, so the tetras, these are called uh, mountain crystal tetra. Now you might not be able to see them that well in the bag, but they are essentially a glass fish. I just love them. I haven't ever kept them. Now I did notice there's one in here, bless him. He's got a, like a birth defect. He's got a like, tiny little pin eye on one side. So his pupil's not like developed properly, but I oh, bless him. He was feeding well. I liked him. He's coming home with us. So. Let's let these acclimatise for a bit. We'll give them 20 minutes, half an hour, just to equalise temperature. I've not been that long in the car, but at least then they can settle down a little bit. We'll go and get some floating plants from downstairs and then we'll release them. So it should be really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what these guys do. So now you can see we've got the floating plants in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the Corydoras in first. Um, oh, sorry. I just, oh, do you know what? They're going to stay in shot. Oh, have you, ever, have you ever used a pair of these? 
They're like sprung-loaded scissors, look. Look at them. How fancy do they look under the water? But yeah, they're really good. Yeah, I've never used a pair of those, or I don't think I have, anyway. Anyway, um, pygmy quarries. <laughs> oh, I could use the scissors. Look at that. Instead of trying to uh, mess around, trying to get into the bag. I'm not too sure you're meant to use precision plant scissors to uh, be opening fish bags, but we're here for it. Here we go, so we got our little group of pygmy quarries going in. Now the reason I wanted these, in all honesty, is so I can do a fish file on these cool little chaps, because they are just so awesome. There's a really big female in there somewhere, there she is. Really chunky. There we go, there's those little guys, right. Let's get the tetras in. The stars of the show. So here they are, our group of little, they're called mountain crystal tetras or pie tetras. Um, their Latin name was Leptogoniatus pi. I don't know if their Latin name is still that. It's got something to do with, there's a pie symbol or what looks like a pie symbol on their side. I can't see it myself, but we'll have a look more of that when they've settled. Ah, oh, they're so cool. They're proper, they look like proper little predators. They've got proper like upturned jaws. Anyway, let's let them settle for a bit and then we'll do some final shots to show you them up close and personal. And I might go and try and find some Amano friends in one of my other tanks to catch out for the Amano to live with in here. We are back and it has been about a week now. Plants have settled in so well. Fish are doing really, really well. Really loving this tank, to be honest. It's like, I just like silver fish, to be honest. They're not, no, they are silver. They are definitely silver. There's not much coloring up today, but I just think they're cool. Where else can you get a see-through animal? How cool is that? Anyway, tank's doing really well. The new plant, the Hyptis, I think it is Hyptis. I don't think there's an S in the middle. It's settled really nicely. It's starting to get these like burnt orange tips. But anyway, less waffling from me. You want to see this, don't you? So let's show you this. Now, as you can see, I added a few botanicals to the aquarium. So these are guava leaves and some older cones. So it just adds a little touch of sort of biotopy realism, I suppose, to the scape. The fish have settled really well. They're an absolute nightmare to focus on because they are see-through, but as you can see, they sort of shoaling and schooling around the aquarium quite happily now. I'd also forgotten how much I love pygmy quarries and watching them sort of busy about the aquarium. I just think they add a nice little element. They're not in your face like all those bigger corridors. Just a little bit more chilled and a little bit more small. All the plants have settled really well. Area cowlons and bucephalandras and even the hyptis has got these sort of beautiful burnt orange tips to it now. So you can see all the new growth coming through. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this tank flourish over the next few weeks. The whole tree stump idea has worked out really, really well. How it sort of cascades over the rocks and sort of, yeah, just blends into the plants and rocks and botanicals really, really nicely. Now I'm going to be away for a week or so now. So when I get back, I'm hoping the plants are uh, even bigger and even bushier. I've got the lights on like a Wi-Fi plug so they'll turn on and off as I want them to. And that means then hopefully all these plants will be able to settle in and grow really big and strong. So watch out for that update in the next few weeks.
I hope you've enjoyed the build. If you've got to this bit, you must have done, because otherwise you've just watched me waffle for however long this video's been. I've really enjoyed this one. I really like it. Pygmy Cories, you know, glass Tetras. It just shows that you don't need anything showy. You don't need anything like bright blue or bright red. I love Cardinals and I love like glow light Tetras and stuff, but sometimes see-through and silver is better. I think it just looks more natural in some respects, but yeah, anyway, it's just personal preference, isn't it? Everyone, you know, keep what you want enjoy it. I'll be back from Florida in about a week's time. From now I think it's maybe 10 days time so I don't know how many uh, video releases I'll get done between then and when I'm back but we'll see how I get on. I'm going to try and get some filming done before I go out. Uh, if you're going to Aquashella I'll see you there. If not I'll see you on this channel whenever you tune in next or at the Taunton store or wherever. So um, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, knocking my tools over. See you later.